Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. I have a question from a client and they are looking for a door position switch. And the client has, uh, here's the scenario from the client. The client reached out and said, hey, I need help. Okay, great, what do you need help with? I need a door position switch. And I ask, what is the application where you need a door position switch? The client says, closet door casing. The customer wants us to wrap the casing with tape light. I need the switch to operate when the door is shut. The switch and lights are off when the door is open the light comes on. I recently tried a Hayful of 833.89.059 but the switch operates opposite of what I need. Okay. So apparently what I'm guessing is from the inside of the opening the customer wants to add tape light. I'm not very familiar with that that they're going to somehow get it, they're going to wrap the casing of the inside of, say, a closet with tape light. And that the client needs the switch, the, oper the switch to operate such that when the door is shut, the lights are off. When the door is open, the lights are on. If you've stayed in a hotel and you've opened up a closet, the light might come on. This is what we're doing. The client says that he tried the Hafela 833.89.059, but the switch operates opposite of what he needs. So that tells me that when the door is closed and the two contacts are brought together, or the, the portions of the door position switch are brought together, it opens the circuit. Um, and that's, it sounds like it's a single pole, single throw switch. So a single pole, single throw switch means it has one uh, throw that can make one connection. It's either you know, open or it's closed. And when it's closed, you'll have continuity within the circuit. Electricity will flow. Um, the, so whatever switch he has, it sounds like it's single pull, single throw, but it would be normally, it would be a, a closed loop type or an open loop type, okay? He needs the opposite of whatever that 833.89.059 uh, would, would, would be. And it sounds like to me that that switch type would be called an open loop type such that it's normally closed. Meaning when you take the hardware out of the bag, it's, there's, there's continuity between the leads. But when the, okay, so it's, electricity will flow when it's normally closed in this scenario. Until you close the door and you bring the two contacts together or the two parts of the switch together, it will then open the circuit. It'll open the electrical configuration of the door position switch. Opening the circuit, electricity can't flow. This is a GRI 199-12. This is for example purposes of this video only. This is a double pole, double throw switch, which means there are six wires. Forget about the fact that there are six wires. It doesn't matter. We're only going to deal, we really only need to deal with two wires if we had a single pole, single throw, but I don't have any single pole, single throw switches here. I have only single pole, double throw. I just happen to pull a double pole, double throw. So ignore three of these wires. We're just going to think of it as a, uh, as a single pole double throw in the sense that you've got a pole and it can, either, um, it can either have an open circuit here or it can have a closed circuit here. And the thing is there are two wires because whether the door is open or closed, it can do different things in the electrical system. There's nothing else that we would do in a closet. We don't need to have some other electrical behavior happen when the door is closed versus open in the sense that we only want one thing to happen. We want the lights off when the door is closed. We want the lights on when the door is open. Okay. I don't need to have another set of wires so that it will give me some other alert. With another set of wires you could basically you could have an application where when the door opens not only will the lights turn on but you'll, you could have an alarm that goes off if you wanted. You could have some sort of indicate, you could, you could lock a, a door within that door if you wanted. I don't know, use your imagination. So what the client needs is either the opposite version of his Hafela door position switch, the opposite electrical configuration, so that when the contacts are separated, um, the circuit is closed. And when the contacts are brought together, the circuit is open. So he obviously has circuit closed here, 
and circuit open when he opens. So when he clo when he opens the door, the lights turn off is what it is. So you could go with a single pole double throw switch like this is the other option. And that's, so the first option is for the client just to call Hayfala and say, what's the opposite electrical configuration of this switch? I need it to work in the opposite fashion because there is no way to wire it differently. Now, I'm going to use a single pole double throw switch because it will allow me to demonstrate how this problem is solved, okay? Because you've got a common and you've got a normally open, normally closed leg, you can wire this either way. You want the lights off here, great. You want them on here, great. You want them uh, on here and off here, great. Whatever you want. You've got the leads to do it. Now you've got a white, red, and green wire. I'm going to think that these are the wires to use because the factory sent them out twisted. They're already twisted together. And there's another three in the same colors that are not twisted. So what I don't know is the identification of these wires, but don't worry, it's actually quite simple. There's going to be a common wire, and then there's going to be your normally open and normally closed wire. I don't know what's common. I don't know what's normally open and what's normally closed. doesn't really matter as long as you have a voltmeter. Pardon me, or a multimeter. This is a multimeter. So on a multimeter, we're going to be able to check what's called continuity. Continuity is a setting on all multimeters, as far as I know. And it's basically right here. It's a little horn Yeah, right there. I wanted to make that bigger so I could see it. It's a little horn right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my multimeter on. Okay. Um, it's a little hard to test this when you I don't have any alligator clips with me to clip the wires together. So basically, I've got to determine which is common and which is normally open and which is closed. So right now, I've got my door position switch in my hand. But this part is separate. It's it's off to the side. That's important because I'm I'm not I'm just trying to determine an electrical configuration when my door is in the open position because my two pieces are separated. And then we'll use this to make sure that we got it right and I'll explain. So right now when I've got the proper common and the proper uh, normally open leg, I think is what it would be called. No, the normally closed leg, I should get continuity. I should hear the sound because I'm emulating my two black components being separated each other from each other, which is the same condition as the uh, door being open. So when the door is physically opened, my two contacts are going to leave each other. Now this is this is a door position switch for a metal door. Uh, I will show you one that you could use for a wood door, but obviously the electrical principle is the same. I'm going to just simply guess. I'm going to touch white to one of my leads. And all the multimeter is going to do, because there's a battery in here, is send a very small amount of voltage through this circuit, which is the red lead to the black lead, touching these wires. Um, and that's how we'll hear a tone when we have continuity. So I'm literally touching my red wire to, my, to a lead, doesn't matter which lead you use, and my green wire. Okay, I, I don't hear a tone. So let's put the green wire down and let me grab the red wire. Well, wait a minute. I may have had the wrong green wire. Yeah, I, I may have. Let's try it again. Yeah, I'm making contact and I don't hear a tone. So let me drop the green wire and let me grab the red wire. Oh, I hear a tone. I hear a tone. Now, the test is going to be when I bring this part to here, it should turn off. And like I said, I don't have alligator clips and only five fingers. When I bring this, it should turn off. It did. I have continuity when the door is open. I, I have a closed circuit when the door is open and I have an open circuit when the door is closed. You can see my voltmeter change as well if you can't hear the tone, which I think that you probably can. 
very 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 easy to determine which is which and that's what the um, that's what this video was about helping the client not only determine not only explain what switch type is required but how to know in the future the difference between these door position switches um, what I'm going to do now is just switch to the screen view I'm going to switch to the screen view and I'm going to uh, show you a door position switch that you can use um, you know and I would obviously uh, like, look forward to earning an order that you would place with us in the world of door position switches there are several and many so let's switch to the screen view and I'll just show you what I used and what I would use for a wood application let's do that now if you are enjoying this video please click thumbs up or like and also please consider subscribing to our channel let's move on to the rest of the video okay so what I had said was we were using a GRI George Risk Industries 199-12 and here it is it was black this is a double pole, double throw switch. Template is here. It's just really more of a um, a document that we can use to um, understand what we're working with. Is the bottom line. Uh, so, one ninety nine dash twelve. As we scroll through, we'll find what we're dealing with. One ninety nine dash. 12, right here double pull double throw gives us the maximum voltage it's rated for maximum current that it can switch all of this is important you want to make sure that your tape light doesn't exceed a quarter amp um, 5 watts 175 volts etc et now this would be appropriate for a steel door one that comes to mind for a wood door would be the Locknetics. 7764 I misspelled that yeah door position switch so you would chisel this rectangular in, uh, plate into the wood door and into the um, end of the wood frame shown here you're just gonna mortise all that in this I think is a single pull double throw well we know that it is because I can see the wiring diagram here this is clearly going to be the common and this would be you know when you're when you've got it wired in such a way that there's continuity whatever the position of the door that you need it to be in that's how you'll wire it so you're always going to use the red wire when the door is closed you're going to want to make sure that the other wire you use is not the wire that's going back to complete the circuit because you want this pole, this throw, I should say, this there's a term for this. I'm it's it's escaping me right now. Not the trigger. There's a term for this. You want this to kick down to blue when the pieces are separated from each other. And this would obviously be the wire that you would use to complete the circuit. And that's how that's going to work. Okay. So the 7764 would be a single pole uh, double throw. A single pole because we've got one. Oh, it's escaping me. One something. One trigger. But you can make two electrical connections, double pole. You can technically make two electrical con uh, connections. Let's say that rather than a light, let's say that you had a green light when the door is open and you have a red light a bar pardon me a red light when the door is closed so you could obviously see how that might be beneficial you might get uh, you might have access control and then when the door is closed it will show a light at a uh, uh, at a remote station showing the door is locked you know you can flip that around you can have a green light when it's when the door is closed whatever colors you like but there is the point of the matter uh, thank you very much. Any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks to our clients, Architectural Builder Supply is building an additional facility. And what follows is not only a look at the 
acreage that we're building the facility on, but also first the architectural renderings as they exist, or at least the architectural plans as they, as they exist at this time. Thank you very much. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the architecturals as they exist at this moment, or at least it wouldn't be proper to call these architecturals, but it would be proper to call them renderings in the sense of they're conceptual drawings, they're not renderings. So the entire space is going to look like this in terms of a site rendering. This will be a 22,000 square foot building of which we'll have specific purpose areas will be a workshop down here. This is a few thousand square feet that will be uh, likely woodworking, metalworking, CNC, things of that nature. This will be an office area here, a private office area. This will be architectural builders supply uh, expanded storage area where, where we will be able to do fulfillment. The entire space in the center is going to be all of the volume, as I call it, uh, large components will be able to store, be stored and stocked there. Machinery that's too large to fit otherwise may be put out here. Specific facility rooms and then some recreation over here. Let's take a look at that drone footage and take, thank you very much for taking a look.